Sarah Hockletubby is a mystery writer whose books earn high praise from readers and critics alike. She draws on her Cherokee identity to create unique and engaging characters who keep readers on the edge of their seats. Hard to see footprints now, Kimasabi. Hollywood has spent decades trying to make up what they want Indian country to be like. And people see these movies, they read these books, and they think they know what Indian country's like. So when I started writing, I wanted to make sure that I got it right so that it would, in some small way, help educate people as to what it's like to live in Cherokee country. My name is Sarah Hoklotubby, and I am an author. I grew up in Rattlesnake Hollow, which is a few miles uh, away from Lake Uchi. My Cherokee grandmother that lived with us when I was, from the time I was young. She's the one that introduced me into digging wild onions and harvesting poke and those types of things. I do think my dad influenced me as a storyteller. Wherever he would go, he would be telling stories and people would be sitting around listening to him telling stories. So I think that maybe uh, I might have picked that up through osmosis, I'm not sure. I got into banking um, when I graduated from college simply because I needed a job. I started at the bottom and ended up being in the banking business for 21 years. I transitioned from working in the bank to becoming an author by getting married. My husband is Choctaw. A lot of people ask me about my name, that I'm Cherokee with a Choctaw name, but uh, we get along great. <laughs> my husband was working in the state of Hawaii on the island of Maui. So I moved to Maui. I found it impossible to find a job in banking. So my husband encouraged me and said, well, try to do something you'd like to do. And I said, well, I think I'd like to write. And uh, I started writing my first book when we lived on Maui. And it just turned into a mystery, mostly because that's what I like to read. I like mystery novels because of the suspense, uh, the idea of trying to solve the problem, crime, whatever it is. I am best known for the Sadie Walela mystery series. And Sadie is a young Cherokee woman in her 20s to 30s. She's independent. She's outspoken. She can speak the Cherokee language. She talks to her dog and her horse in Cherokee. She can pretty much do whatever she wants to do if she puts her mind to it. Tiny blooms fell from the Oklahoma sky, released by a nearby pear tree making way for tender spring leaves. A morning breeze carried the white flowers through Sadie's car window, attaching the delicate works of nature to her hair. She flicked at the flowers with her fingers and then applied a quick stroke of lipstick, using the rearview mirror to check her appearance. The honey-colored tint of her flawless complexion, her jet black hair, and her high cheekbones reflected her daddy's Cherokee lineage. I wanted it to reflect Cherokee country today. I don't write historicals. I wanted it to be current. I didn't have a lot of stereotypes or stereotypical characters which made it more realistic. I think it's important that Cherokee country today be depicted in an accurate way because there's so much misinformation out there. My love of travel and seeing new places, I think, started when I first moved to Hawaii to meet and know people of other cultures is a very eye-opening experience, and I think it broadens a person. It certainly did me and affected my writing in that particular way. We've traveled to islands, not only Hawaii, but islands in the Pacific, 
Samoa, Tahiti, down to New Zealand and Australia, and to meet the indigenous people there and to experience some of their culture, their language, their food, and to realize that we all have so much in common, the indigenous people of the world. The way that I inject culture into my books is simply by Sadie or other characters living the way they live. For instance, when I was a kid, we went out and dug wild onions. So it was natural for me to have Sadie to do that and to describe how she did it. Sadie placed several slices of bacon in her own iron skillet and started cleaning the onions in the sink. As soon as the bacon finished frying, she poured off the grease, saving just the right amount of drippings to cook the onions and the eggs together. Then she savored an indulgence she seldom allowed. Although wild onions were a traditional Cherokee dish, she usually ate them only at church gatherings or special wild onion dinners offered in the community. Tonight was different. I didn't want to beat people over the head with it. I just wanted it to be part of normal life. The same thing with the stomp dances is having my character to go to a stomp dance and to have some of the story revolve around what's happening there and just try to inject it in a natural way. Going to a stomp dance was kind of like going to church, Cherokee style. She had been raised in the Baptist church and her family rarely attended stomp dances. But she had heard about the ceremony held entirely in the Cherokee language, where the participants danced around the sacred fire. It had almost been lost after the Cherokees moved to Indian territory, but had been revived in an effort to preserve the old ways. Sadie's dad used to remind her to never forget where her people came from. I think it's real important for Native voices to be heard in fiction. When I first started writing, there weren't a lot to go find and read. And I think it's important for Native voices to be heard in every genre, but in fiction, to try to get rid of the stereotypes and to talk about what it's really like. I feel like Native people can write about being Native better than non-Native people can. <laughs>